Hi, I'm Joe Field, captain of the retailing brigade at Flying Colors Comics, and this is my Scotch Parlor story. Now, everybody thinks that the summer of 67 is the summer of love, but for me, it was the summer of comics, and I'll tell you why. On the third day of summer in 1967, I broke my arm falling out of a tree from about 20 feet, spent the night in the hospital, needed surgery. And when I got home, it was bed rest for several days. And some of the neighbor kids brought me little get well gifts. But my pal Steve, uh, who's my sort of comics guru and, and was from even, even when he was nine years old in 1967, brought me two comic books. He brought me Amazing Spider-Man 51, which was the first full appearance of the Kingpin and uh, Fantastic Four number 65, which was the first appearance of Ronan the Accuser, who's been seen in the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. And so that, that became the summer of hunting for comics everywhere we could. Yeah, and that's where it all started. For me, it was, it was never a dream, never a thought that I would open a comic book store. Uh, my, my goal was to, to have a career in radio. And when I got out of school, I went to work for uh, KJOY AM in Stockton, California. I worked there for 10 years in sales and marketing, and it was in that role that I had a kind of a loony idea. All today's news from California's Capital News Station, News Watch 13. It's about time Stockton was recognized for something fun. So says Joe Field, who was spearheading the effort to have Stockton named as the birthplace of the Fantastic Four. The Human Torch, The Thing, The Invisible Girl, and Mr. Fantastic appeared on the scene 25 years ago, hailing from Central City, California. There are many cities in the comics that are that use real names, New York, San Francisco, Los Angeles, etc. One of the few remaining that's still a fictitious name is Central City, California. Well, it attracted the attention of Stan Lee, and Stan said he was totally behind the idea to, you know, we've saved universes on a daily basis, this is the least we can do for little old Stockton kind of thing. And in February of 1986, Stan Lee and a guy dressed as Spider-Man came to Stockton to deliver the proclamation on the steps of City Hall. And that led into Stockton being the home of the Fantastic Four. And then Stan asked me to do PR for his wife's first novel uh, as a result of my success doing the, the Fantastic Four campaign. And from there, I was asked to do advertising and promotion for a new convention that was starting up, which became WonderCon in Oakland and became co-owner of that convention, got out of radio in October 1988, was when Flying Colors opened, and we've been here ever since. This is where it starts in, in 1988 with uh, used fixtures that we picked up from a, a Gemco that was closing in Riverside uh, to the times when uh, I would do one-day conventions with a buddy of mine out in Stockton just to see if selling comics was something I could do. On that first day that we opened on October 3rd, 1988, when I came to work, the first thing I did was check the answering machine. And on the answering machine was a call from Stan Lee to congratulate us on the opening of the store. And I saved that recording. It's you know one of those prized pieces of history for me. But it was October 88 was probably a really good time to open a store. We were opening about six or seven months before the first Batman movie opened. And that was a movie that sort of lit the world on fire, but most uh, mass market businesses didn't know what to do with a weird, creepy looking Batman movie, so they stayed away from it. Well, that left the door wide open for comic shops like this to just be the, the spots to do all kinds of great things. And a little bit later in 1989, we were one of the stops for a signing tour uh, for a graphic novel, one of the first original graphic novels called Batman Arkham Asylum uh, by writer Grant Morrison and artist Dave McKean. We still sell that book today, but that day, probably the first time I felt validated that we were going to be able to make it in business. And this is only goes back to about 2011, but uh, some of the artists that we've had come in to sign uh, include Stan Lee, uh, Neil Adams did this Batman, 
Jim Lee uh, did this uh, Joker piece that's a, the centerpiece of the whole thing. The co-creator of the Watchmen, Dave Gibbons, did this uh, Rorschach from Watchmen. Uh, Liam Sharp, Wonder Woman artist, did this really cool Wonder Woman here. Joe who comes up with these creative ideas of how to put together a creative, fun, fundraiser that would benefit either important causes in the community or important causes with the comic book industry. Joe Field, back in 2001, he founded Free Comic Book Day. This is the world's largest comics related event. What started small has now ballooned into what you see here today. Free Comic Book Day is now celebrated worldwide. In 65 countries, publishers distribute 6 million copies of special edition comic books for the giveaway with an overall turnout of about 1.5 million people. The comic book industry today is probably bigger and wider and more confusing than it's ever been. Comics are everywhere. Comics are the nexus of all pop culture. If you think of all of the things that are going on in TV, movies, video games, advertising, all visual entertainment begins with comics. Uh, they all begin with storyboarding, which is comics, before they ever hit the screen. And so comics are a really powerful entertainment medium. One of the world's best-selling cartoonists, Raina Telgemeier, uh, did her little self-portrait from Smile and uh, some of her graphic novels. Andy Lanning from Guardians of the Galaxy did the Groot. I thought 30 some odd years ago that I was getting into a business. What I didn't realize I was doing getting into community building based on the people who come in week after week buy their comics and get a little community along with it and those are our Flyco faithful and, and I, I couldn't be more thankful for each and every one of them. There are a lot of places where you can get most of the same stuff that we sell but there are no other places where you can come and get what we actually give to the community on a daily basis and let us show you something either in art or story or both that we know you'll want to come back to time and again because we believe that comics are for everyone and there's there's art and stories for people who are open to to, uh, to look at them to read them and to experience what we have nick dragada doing something from east of west eric larson spider i mean here's the deal it's an all-star yeah, that's, door of that's fame, uh, and it's a one-of-a-kind piece yeah. that is sort of like a, a, a bit of the gallery view when you come into yeah, Flying Colors. My goal is to keep on uh, making this work for as long as we possibly can. I will tell you that the reason I opened a store was for my family. My wife and my daughters are, are the inspiration, and it took a long time to really make it a completely family business because those first five years, I, oh, I was commuting six days a week from Stockton. So the goal was get the family moved back here. My dad just does what he loves. It comes from, he can't help it. It just comes from a really authentic place. Mm -hmm. And he wouldn't know how to make it contrived. He just does, like, he's very true to it. So. What do I know about the future? I just know that we're gonna keep on working hard to make the Flying Colors viable and keep on delivering comics and community Contra Costa area. We want to be part of what's going on here for a long time to come.